Our desire was that God will refresh us in every way. He will refresh our minds. He's going to refresh our hearts. He's going to refresh our bodies, our calling, our finances, our relationships, so that we can live with a fresh energy the life that God has called us to. We began our refresh. But how many of us will agree that it's much easier to start strong than to finish strong? That in as much we started the year by going back to the basics and actually listening to God and allowing God to actually refresh us, in as much we started in a very strong way, sometimes it's really hard to finish strong. And my question this morning is, Mavuno, we started the year by listening to God in prayer, in fasting. We started by listening or, or connecting with the heart of God, of God with the, with the, for the lost. We started connecting with the heart of God in regard to the poor when we went to the prison. How are we going to finish the year? What kind of a people are we going to become by December 31st? You know, many a times we we face external or internal challenges that make it very difficult for us to finish strong. And many times it's easier to give up or even to let go. Right now maybe you're so energized, you're like, yes, now right now I can pray, I can fast. You know, I have a sense of calling, I have a sense of purpose in what God is calling me to do and to be. But many a times the going gets tough. And many a times it's easier to give up, it's easier to let go. And we lack the energy, the steam, the stamina to keep going on. Now that we have finished the refresh journey, how do you ensure that your fire doesn't go out? You know, last Sunday was an amazing Sunday. How many of us were here last Sunday? It was a super service, it was awesome. I saw people surrender. I saw people connect with God like I've never seen here in Mavuno. I saw people opening up their lives and saying, God, lead me. I need your power. I need your Holy Spirit. I cannot do this in my own human effort. I need you, Holy Spirit. And my question is, how do we continue fueling that passion? How do we continue feeding that hunger and thirst for God? That it wasn't only a Sunday. It was not only during the refresh. That is going to be a daily experience for every single one of us. How do you ensure that you're going to finish well in the year 2016? How are you going to ensure that you are as passionate for God as you are now or even more? How are you going to ensure that Mavuno Church will become a praying church? How are you going to ensure that you're not going to lose the passion you have for the poor and the needy in this city? How are we going to make sure that we continue fueling that passion to serve God's people? How are we going to make sure? To begin my sermon, let me ask a question right now. How many of us here have ever been lost? You kind of lost your direction at one point. Okay, just share with your neighbor your experience. A moment you saw and you got lost. You lost your direction. Just share with your neighbor in two seconds. How was the experience at that time? For couples, this is a good time to turn to the other neighbor because. <laughs> this is a good time to turn to the other neighbor. <laughs> A moment you got lost, you didn't get your directions right. You are so sure where you are going, but somehow something happened. You see, the reason as to why I, I asked the couples to turn to the other neighbor is because one of the most heated debates have been during those moments that we have been lost. You know, pastors don't fight. 
we have heated debates. So for us, we don't fight. So one of our most heated debates, when we are like, it's when I am lost. But obviously, as a man, you can't admit you are, you are lost. <laughs> and somehow I thought that that is going to change. You see, there is another woman in my life who directs me via GPS. In as much she does a good job, I can be honest, I've still, be, I've still gotten lost many times. Just recently, we were hurling them. You know, you know, some things are like, all I have heard, so I'm like, which road? What, what did she say? And you cannot press repeat. <laughs> or to tell her, come again and go slowly. And we got lost for almost like 30 minutes. And I was like, where am I over here? I still get lost. And so, as someone who has been lost, not once, not twice, not thrice, a lot, there are three things I've discovered about all this. One, people who are lost rarely get lost on purpose. My wife, this is for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've realized that people who get lost rarely get lost on purpose. You think it's because you're not paying attention. But by the way, we do. We do. I cannot just get out of my house to get lost. Seriously, Pastor Joro, really. I can't. We really get lost on purpose. We do pay attention. But secondly, you are typically lost before you know you are lost. You are typically lost before you know you are lost. You know, you are never aware that you are getting lost. You are driving in your mind and in your heart, you know you are going to the right direction. By the time even you know you are lost already, lost and it, it just dawns on you my goodness and by the time you realize you're getting lost you are probably already been lost for a while the last one is you always end up where the road you are on takes you that's a fact you always end up where the road you are on takes you you see Whatever road and direction you travel on will determine where you end up. At that time, I might be like praying all the serious prayers, speaking in tongues. But the fact is, on the road you are on, it will take you to a destination. You always end up where the road you are takes you on. You see, Mavuno, the direction you take will lead you to a destination. Any road you take or any direction you take will eventually lead you to a destination where you intended to end up or where you desired to be. Can I say with all love, it's pretty much irrelevant. At that time where you wanted to be, where you desired to be, it's irrelevant. But the direction you take will lead you to a destination. If you took the wrong direction, you won't make it to your desired destination. You know, it seems obvious, right? Like, Joro, you're not telling us something new. It's so obvious. If you take the wrong direction, you're going to end up into the wrong destination. But as obvious that might, uh, that might seem, when it comes to geography and maps and, GB and GPS, all that, when it comes to the rest of our lives, our faith journey, your financial lives, our dating lives, our professional lives, our marriage lives, our, the way we raise our kids. We so easily forget that this same principle applies. There is a huge disconnect between the destination that people want to ultimately reach in life and the path they choose to travel. It seems very obvious that, yeah, the road you take will lead you to the destination, to a destination. And many a times we forget the same principle in our own very lives. That in your marriage, in your finances, in your faith journey, the way you raise the kids, sometimes there is a huge disconnect 
or where we desire to go and the direction we are taking. You know, as a pastor, I get to hear many people confess, hey, Pastor Njoro, I want to date this kind of a person. I want to be married to this kind of a person. I want to have this kind of a marriage. I want to have this kind of a spiritual life. I want to be serving like this. And they go on. I want, I want to be this kind of a person. I have, I have a tendency of asking, where do you see yourself in five years, 10 years, 20 years? And people will come and say, Pastor Jero, this is what I want to become. This is how I want my life to be in the next two, three, four, or five years. That knowingly or unknowingly, we choose paths in life that simply won't lead us towards our desired destination. And then, what happens if we don't end up to the desired destination? We end up getting mad at God. What is wrong, God? I wanted to go this way. I wanted to become this kind of a person. But you ask, what is wrong? Can I tell you what's wrong? What's wrong is that you choose, you chose to walk down a path that will never get you to a desired destination. I remember one time, someone came and said, you know, she, she was a lady and she was complaining about a relationship that has become abusive and she was not happy anymore. And she came and she was like, Pastor Njoro, I don't know what is wrong. And to be honest, at that time, I was like, there is no scripture I can open up for you. Because to be honest, you chose a path. You chose a path. At the beginning of that relationship, there were red, red flags over there. But you chose a path. And right now, the road you choose to take will lead you to a destination. Let me ask you right now. If you load up your car to go to Mombasa, as much as you want to get there, if you live in Nairobi and you take the Nairobi Kisumu Highway, regardless of how prayerful you are and how much of the tongues you can speak on this earth or how much closer you walk with the Lord, praise the Lord, you take the Nakura, the Nairobi Kisumu Highway, you will simply not get to Mombasa regardless of your intention. In every area of your life, as we come to the end of Refresh, hear me well. The direction you take from today, not your intentions, not your hopes, not your dreams, not your prayers or beliefs, but the direction you take will ultimately Determine your destiny. And many times, we are like that guy who wants to go to Mombasa, but we are taking the, the Nairobi Kisumu Highway. We want to become, leave a legacy for our kids. We want to have a great spiritual experience with the Lord. We want your marriage to reflect heaven. You want your finances to look good. But are you moving in the right direction? Because the road you take will determine your destination. So, how do you make sure that you finish well? How do you make sure that you are intentional to stay on the right course? How do you make sure that the path I have taken will lead me to the destination that I want? So what must we do as Mavuno today to stay on the right course? Because through all the refresh, we did amazing things. We prayed and fasted for a weekend. We started fasting every single week. We encouraged each other to read God's word, to invest wisely, to, to start to serve. But my question is, how do we make sure we stay on the right course that will lead us where God wants us to be? And to answer that question, 
Please turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Maybe let me just put into context this scripture before we read. The book of Hebrews does not tell us its author. We don't have the author's name. It does not tell us where the original readers of the book live, but we all know they were Jews. Many people thought the book was written by Paul because the style of the book is sometimes like his style, but sometimes it seems different. So we cannot be sure. But the author of Hebrews uh, is writing a letter to the Christians who are facing lots of difficulty at that particular time. They were going through persecution. Life was so hard for them. And he was trying to persuade them. He was trying to press the believing Hebrews to stay on the right direction in the Christian faith and persevere in it in order to finish well and not fall away. Notwithstanding all the sufferings they might meet within as they do that. So it was a very difficult moment for the Christians. But the writer of Hebrews was telling them, look, you need to stay on the right course. You need to be focused. You need to be intentional on the direction you take. So let's read Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Can we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. I invite you right now, Holy Spirit, that you may speak to your people. Use me, Lord. Lord, as I bring out your word, I ask that I may decrease, that you may increase at this moment. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. First things, the, one of the first things you can actually notice in this particular scripture, the author refers to our Christian journey as a race. Not a sprint, not a dash, but a marathon. You know, one of the basic teachings of Christianity is so simple. It is not how you start that matters. It's how you finish. That's one of the basic, simple teachings in Christianity. It doesn't matter how you start, it's how you finish. You know, not everyone in the Bible stayed in the right course and made it in the hall of fame or the hall of faith, as we call it, in Hebrews 11. Not everyone. We could say that even the Bible has its own hall of shame. There are people who somehow didn't focus and they ended up doing stuff or they didn't end up women or men who are supposed to be in the Hebrews 11 list, but are conspicuous by their absence. The first king of Israel, Saul, should be there, but he's not. Why? Because he focused more on pleasing the people than pleasing God. Another guy, the wisest man who ever lived, Solomon, does not appear on that list in Hebrews 11. And I believe that King Solomon should be there, but he's not. He focused more on foreign women and their gods. Another person who I believe should have been there, Balaam, a good prophet of the Lord. But somehow he doesn't appear on that list. This guy, his eyes were on the money. His eyes were so out of focus and distracted that he could not see an angel in front of his face. His own donkey was more focused on God than him. They, this man 
took the wrong direction that led them to the wrong destination. This is my one message of this, uh, my one point of this message this morning. Your direction determines your destination. Your direction determines your destination. Would you say that to your friend right now? Your direction determines your destination. The direction you take will determine where you end up. It's not about beliefs. It's not about intentions. It's not about hopes or dreams. It is the path you take will lead you somewhere. And today, I've come to challenge you or to encourage you that your direction after this Sunday will determine where you will end up 5, 10, 15, 20 years to come. If this is true to us, then the question is, what must I do to stay on the right course? What must I do not to be distracted like Balaam, like King Saul, or like Solomon? What must I do to keep on the right path? What must I do? And the author of Hebrews gives us two things in the text that we must do to finish well. Two things which are critical for Mavuno as we move forward. Refresh is over. But what are the two things we must do? To finish well, to finish well, to finish strong, and to end up into the place that God wants us to be. Number one, lay aside all obstacles. Lay aside all obstacles. We all know that obstacles have a way of distracting us, right? You know when you when you when you when you uh, when you have so many obstacles thrown into your path or into your life, they somehow distract us from getting into the right path or moving into the right direction. And the author of Hebrews actually highlights two obstacles. They come in twofold. Number one, it's weights and sins. He says, "I want you to throw off." The weights that can distract you. I want you to deal with the sins that can entangle you. You know, let me talk about weights. I once heard someone say, if it is not a wing, it's a weight. A wing is something that facilitates our walk of faith. It's something that builds you up. It's, some, it's something that takes you from here to there. Not from here to here, but from here to here. It's a wing. It makes you to go higher. It makes you to soar. Well, a weight is a hindrance to it. A weight is just a weight. Imagine running with a weight. Imagine running a marathon, carrying a 10 kg weight on your shoulders. I want you to have that kind of a picture. And the author of Hebrews is saying, if you want to finish well, you must deal with the weights that you have been carrying. You cannot finish well if you are carrying weights. A weight is something or anything that hinders us from carrying out our calling. Something which is a non-essential to our mission. Something which consumes your time. Something that consumes your energy that could be better used in advancing God's kingdom. You know, a weight may be one thing for one believer and another thing for someone else. It speaks of things which are innocent in and for themselves. They may not be a sin, but it's just a weight. It's an unnecessary weight that you're carrying. But in as much they could be innocent things, but when they slow you down and distract you from moving to the right direction, they are weights. And the writer of Hebrews says they must go. Tell your neighbor, all weights must go. They must go. Remember, 
obstacles of our way of distracting us from going to the right direction. And as I said, your direction determines your destination. And right now in this service, there are many of us right now, there are some weights you have been carrying and they are slowing you down. Some of us, the weight that we are carrying this morning is too much sleep. Innocent. It's not a sin to sleep. Is it a sin? No. But you know, for heaven's sake, that too much sleep, laziness, is a weight you need to drop today. I say, God, I don't want to be that guy who is so lazy in my pursuit of God. To some of us, your weight is procrastination. I will, I will, but you never get to do it. Haki, haki mungu, nda fast. Haki, hey, hey, things are thick, bana. Hey, hey, morning glory, my guy. I will, I will. Imagine some, how many things have you said I will do that could have taken you to the right direction and taken you to the right destination. But because of your procrastination, you are still in the same place, actually not in the same place, heading to the wrong direction now. What is your weight you have been carrying? Maybe to someone in this service, your weight is a word that your father spoke to you many years ago. But that word has been slowing you down, has been bringing you down. What is it? What is your weight? What weight have you been carrying? Is it low self-esteem? Is it the inferiority complex? Any opportunity that shows up? Uh, I don't think I'm qualified. Come on, it's a weight. And my prayer will be, this morning, there are many weights that need to be surrendered to God for us to move. There are many weights that need to be let go of for you to become the man or the woman that God desires you to be. You cannot run the race with weights. What is your weight? Is it unforgiveness? Someone you've been carrying all for many, many years. And to be honest, that person even today is celebrating his Labor Day in Mombasa. But for you, you are carrying a weight you should not be carrying. Drop it down today in Jesus' name. You cannot, you, let me tell you, your heart is so small to carry some weights. My heart is only big to carry God, not weights. What are some of the weights you are carrying? Procrastination. Unforgiveness. Can I tell you some of the weights? Can I, can I speak to someone right now? Some of you, your WhatsApp is a weight. Woo. Facebook is a weight. And here you are, you're like, ay, 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 ay. the first thing in the morning, Lord, is to connect with you, hallelujah. The first thing you do when you turn is WhatsApp to see every, everything that people have been saying all through the night. And by the time by the time you get to know, it's already seven, you need to go. And God has been waiting in that room. He's like, come on, my daughter, drop that weight. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Drop that weight. Let's move. But you can't move. And this week, I had one of my friends ask told me, you know what, Pasi? You might not understand, but I was like, you're so in the spirit, you're energizing me to preach on Sunday. He just said, you know what? I'm getting out of all the WhatsApp groups. I can't do this. It's affecting my marriage, affecting my, the way I'm connected with my kids. I cannot do it. And I told him, my brother, that's a weight. Drop it. And don't feel guilty. And don't apologize. Actually, I honor you for that. What weight are you carrying? What weight are you carrying right now? Is it a pain? A heart you've been carrying? Anytime you try to take your steps into your destiny, that pain cannot allow you to progress, cannot allow you to focus. It pushes you back to the very place where you, you just look down on yourself. You don't trust people. You don't trust God. You don't trust anything. And you're like, I cannot... I cannot move because of my heart and my pain. What weight are you carrying? And I've come here this morning to say, 
if you are to finish well, if you are to finish strong, every weight must be let go in Jesus' name. So the writer of Hebrews says, let go of your weight. Can watching TV be a weight? Come on, let's talk. Can watching TV be a weight? It's a weight. Movies. It's a weight. As in, look, look at this. The weight is, I need to be doing this. This is what I need to do to take me there. But this is what I am doing. Instead of taking me there, it's taking me there. What weight are you carrying? And today as I prayed, I know that God today, as you surrender those weights, something amazing will happen. Something amazing will happen. And God will replace your weights with wings to help you become the man and the woman that God desires you to be. The, another obstacle, he calls them sins that so easily entangle. You know when I read that sins that easily entangle, one of the things, the picture that came to mind was Tarzan. I used to watch Tarzan a lot. And one of the things I noticed about Tarzan, he used to jump.